July 2024 video horoscopes with Milada from astrolada.com. July is forming up to be a very interesting month, a month of battle between light and darkness, but the light predominates because the month starts with a new moon on Sirius, the most spiritual powerful star the brightest star in the sky with energy the christ that energy is carried there which with only with good aspects then the whole month jupiter is passing over the eye of the bull the luckiest star according to ancient astrology of hermes the star of success and abundance and jupiter is the planet of success and abundance and this happens once in 12 years only this is the star of archangel michael so we have the energy of the christ consciousness through the new moon coming to us it's a sirius is the star of freedom of being free that's why a lot of independence days happen for different countries around that day so the energy of freedom and spiritual awakening comes through the new moon while through jupiter we have the energy of archangel michael coming to who fights the dark forces simultaneously with that uranus and mars are coming together and in the middle of the month they join on the critical degree 25 degrees of taurus where projected the star al Gol, a demonic star, the most inauspicious star. <laughs> it has like demonic influence there. And it's a star of catastrophes and shocks and beheadings and uh, woo, <laughs> losing one's head. Uh, but that's the only negative influence. Or it can also be positive because through the star al Gol, you can cut off unwanted things like the head of medusa is cut off you can cut off unwanted things from your life but there is this the gathering of this dark energy but jupiter archangel michael sirius the christ that energy of the ascended masters as well energy of the teachers of humanity is there to help us i'm so excited let's dive into the 12 signs to describe it to each of the 12 signs and before that i want to introduce you to my new four hour tutorial that i've recorded for you already on the first 12 hours a thousand ones were sold so this is thank you so much for your trust in me it speaks about each of the 12 signs and the five connected themes in the life of your rising sign uh, in the life of a person according to their rising sun or moon sign do you know that every person every sign has five topics in their lives that are connected for example do you know that aquarius people especially aquarius rising their money and financial success very much depends on their social connections and on their friendships because the ruler of the second house is also the ruler of the 11th house second house of money with 11th house of friends or social network that's why I very often aquarius need to social network and can become abundant through that or if their friendships are not good, their money is not going to be good. <laughs> or, for example, let's take someone else. Taurus rising. Uh, they are their second house of finances is connected is the same rule as the fifth house so they can their financial state can really change after having a children, or if they do something creative that they really love. Or uh, but there's five such topics that are interconnected for each sign. For example, why is Scorpio? such a battle sign because the ruler of scorpio is also the ruler of the sixth house of battles disputes arguments and enemies scorpio is the sign that has the most enemies because the same planet that rules them rules their sixth house of enemies <laughs> but because it's mars that planet that rules them they win over their enemies but it means they have more enemies so <laughs> so i will describe you and how to do remedies if one area of your life is not working for relationships for your career like for example for capricorn if they're career is not working which is ruled by libra venus they should focus on the fifth house which is also ruled by venus to raise the vibration of their venus and their career will also start flowing so they might do some fun stuff creative stuff or even after having a child their career can take off but anyway if you're interested to take this course it's 24 dollars four hours and it becomes 39 after the 15th of july now let's start Libra Sun Moon Rising July 2024. Libra, the month starts around the 4th, 5th on July with the new moon in your 10th house. And this moon, this new moon, new beginnings, is especially auspicious because it's aligned with the star Sirius. 
a very potent and positive star according to ancient astrology. The sun and the moon, which create new uh, energy, new ideas are aligning with Sirius, the star of spiritual protection. It's the dog star, the star of divine protection from hum for humanity. It has direct relation to the energy of Isis and Horus or Virgin Mother Mary and the child Jesus. Uh, so very the, the, the Christ energy. So very, they can be like illumination for you, spiritual impulse that comes to you that is connected to your career, for example, that is connected to your professional development, or they can be a renewal of some, because <clears throat> the new moon can renew some project that you started in, and this new moon is expected wonderfully. And it's very close to Venus, another helping planet. So you can ask around the new moon, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, for divine insights uh, towards your path and direction in life because the 10th house is well, your mission in life. What is your mission? You can get some insight, some alignment, some divine help in that direction. Or so maybe start if you want to apply for a new career, a new job, or if you want to start some new business, for example. Um or if you want to contact or reach out to 10 houses, authority people or people who have more power or people that are can like bosses, for example, you can use this new moon, maybe a day or two after the new moon. So the moon becomes visible to reach out to such figures and it can be auspicious for you. Also for your reputation, it can be really good somehow to uplift, to give a facelift to your reputation. And you can achieve some powerful things. The 10th house is the house of actions, your actions, your karmas in the world. That can be very good, high vibrational and uh, contribute in a positive way, not just for you, but for many people. Then this new moon, so it's just career renewal and so on, but the whole month, Jupiter, which is the luckiest planet, will be passing over the luckiest and most positive star in the sky, known as Aldebaran. This is Jupiter. This is the eye of the bull. So this happens once in 12 years only that Jupiter transits over the eye of the bull. It carries the eye of the bull. Aldebaran, the star, is the star of Archangel Michael, at least in Christian cosmology. I'm not sure how this archangelic entities are called, that they're very strongly connected to Aldebaran. In other religions, I don't know, but I'm telling you that Archangel Michael energies are very powerful the whole of July. And it's happening in your ninth house, the house of luck. So a lucky planet on a lucky and very successful and abundant star all in a lucky house for you. <laughs> the first. So I think really... Divine, and the ninth house is the house of divine protection, divine insight and intuition, your higher self or higher mind, so you can have powerful downloads. This is the house of prophecy, the future, uh, your path, seeing clearly from a higher perspective the path ahead for you. And you see, it's an eye. So Jupiter is passing through an eye. Jupiter is knowledge. And there will be some illuminating knowledge that comes to you, very high vibrational, connected to the energies of Archangel Michael, which can become a source of abundance for you over the next 12 years. Because this is the wealthiest star as well, out the barn. Or these insights and downloads can bring a lot of success for you. You can be lucky in many undertakings. So that's why with the, after the new moon in your 10th house of success, and Jupiter transiting the whole month, especially the first two weeks, over the star of success and abundance to initiate new projects, uh, new chapter in your life, inspired action, inspiration can pour for you. And especially nine house activities can be especially very auspicious for you and bring growth, illumination, spiritual growth, self-growth, but more positivity, new ideas, uh, more luck and abundance. <laughs> and what are those? Maybe traveling, traveling foreign country, uh, visiting a foreign place, or starting something educational, 
or completing, Jupiter can give success with completing some educational project or starting to pre-qualify or study something. And it will be very high vibration, very good, very well aligned with your dharma, which is the good karma, basically. You can also have your own insights, like understand see how the future will be going, or you can nine houses, uh, teachers or people with very high vibration, uh, mentors, uh, teachers in your life, or even figures that are not specifically professors and mentors, but someone that appears in your life as an advisor, as a conduit of divine archangelic messages, and uh, maybe someone from foreign country, because it's again the ninth house, someone more academically advanced or spiritually advanced, or even a teacher appearing in your life, a new inspirational figure to raise your vibration or someone to give you advice. If, if you need direction, reach out for advice. This is the house of mentorship that Jupiter is doing this, this incredible, powerful activation of the luckiest star. Um, or start a course, or if you're yourself educator, if you're teaching projects or anything to do with foreign import, export, trade, moving to a foreign country, all very auspicious activities. So just traveling somewhere, very auspicious activity, and even can create abundance of new ideas or new insight into you that makes you expand and grow, feel more positive about the future, get clarity about the future and where you are heading. Um, and at the same time, Jupiter is trining the whole month, the south node. The south node is transiting through your sign Libra. And usually the south node is about releasing and letting go. For you, Libra, maybe over the past one year until the end of this year, there is a lot of releasing to do, even detachment from desires and from material things. Um, it's a very spiritual influence, but it does it through letting go, through losing stuff but now you're very protected the whole year even to the south node is in your first house because jupiter keeps looking at it so the combination of jupiter and south node they only make trying the the most powerful aspect is a trine so this combination of jupiter and south node is extremely spiritual for you south node is very spiritual jupiter is very spiritual and they're in self houses so there's you can even be there's this energy of growing your uh, self, improving yourself. These are houses of self improval and inspired and inspiration. And South Node and Jupiter allow the channels of inspiration to be open. But it's also allowing you to let go of things with ease. So South Node wants you to let go of things that are no longer defining you, that you've paid your karmic dues for that you have you, you're ready to release and it's happening in a graceful inspired way without pain because of the jupiter trine you see the why it's good to release it you let it go and it can be the south node jupiter trine releasing something that has been blocking you for a long time and feeling freer uh, but the south node is on a star code the grape harvester grape gatherer it's connected and it's a closing trine between jupiter and south node so maybe something that started a few years ago the conjunction was in 2020 maybe before or after you started something you can start reaping right now from it because jupiter is on the star of material rewards and the eye of the bull of abundance so it can be the harvesting of this as well um, of harvesting of spiritual efforts of any way or knowledge, very powerful period in July for knowledge, for realizations. But Vindimatrix, where the South Node is, is also known as the star as the widow maker, which is seen to have divorces, separations. I'm not saying you'll be going through that, but for some it might be literal, but it happens naturally, it happens uh, in a very smooth way, because of Jupiter overseeing with a trine, this uh, widow making or separating influence of the star being the matrix where the south node is in. So you can release some attachments in a graceful way. Um, or it can, um, yeah, so it's not going to be painful. That's what I'm trying to say. 
Uh, and you can separate not necessarily with another person or with an aspect of yourself because the South Node is in your first house, which is you. And South Node is very introspective and you've been introspectively observing and becoming more spiritualized and observing what it is you don't want to carry anymore. And Jupiter will help the separation with this aspect of yourself. Very enlightened, very gentle, uh, very organic and natural. And lucky for you, it will have extremely, if you separate yourself with something, let go of something, uh, it, the pain, it won't be such a painful process, but it will open the gates of abundance, Jupiter, without the baron for you. And open the gates for growth, Jupiter in the ninth house and opportunities. Now, <clears throat> the other big event is that around the middle of the month, Uranus and Mars will meet together in your eighth house. Uranus and Mars is more disruptive energy. They're meeting on a more disruptive star near the Pleiades, somewhere here. Uranus is here. Mars comes and joins it. The Pleiades is here. And above it is another disruptive star <laughs> called Algol or Medusa's head. So it's about cutting something off. Medusa's head was cut off, cutting some monster away from your life. Uh, but Jupiter, but Uranus and Mars in the eighth house, which is again about excretion. So interesting here. Swords, knives, excretion, cutting off heads of monsters. Eighth house is the house of our traumas and our inner demons and our internal struggles and battles within ourselves between light and good. Are you going to let the darkness win over and lose your head? Because Medusa lost her head in this eighth house of power struggles over something. Are you going to lose your head or lose your head under some passions? Because eighth house can rule our lower impulses as well of the passions, desires that are all consuming like a snake, you know, obsessive, compulsive. For some, it can manifest that these desires escalate, that these desires become more turbulent. You lose your head over such things. So eighth house is also secret relationships or sexual relationships. So we have to be a bit careful there. But on a positive level, because Uranus and Mars, and because we have the protection of Archangel Michael, how the Baron is connected to Archangel Michael, Jupiter is there looking straight at his sign, and the new moon in Sirius, the Christ the star and energy, we have a lot of protection to win over the darkness within us with the star our goal being activated and uh, to cut off yeah, the meaning of Medusa our goal, to cut off such eight house activities that are hidden and that are toxic, to ruthlessly remove something toxic from your life. Um, also, you have to be a bit careful with Uranus and Mars about a risky uh, financial you know, especially on stock markets, eight house rules that, or with your mutual finances with a partner, if you have a business partnership, or with mutual finances in your marriage, uh, not to be too rash, not to lose your head there. But the star will go where Mars and Uranus are meeting, according to hermetic knowledge, is also star of wealth in the eighth house, which is connected to resources and money from others or hidden resources. So for some of you, it can actually be an activation for money coming to you from others. But it has this connotation that something disruptive happens uh, first, maybe some kind of a struggle, some kind of a shock or surprise uh, because of the, the star overall. But still, this potential is there and it's sudden. Um, but also, you know, be careful not like, as I said, those mutual finances, taxes, and so on. But also some secrets can be illuminated. The eighth house is the house of secrets. Uranus is the planet of truth uh, that can come to the surface, that can be surprised, something that's alchemically working on your emotional, psychological state. But also it can be like a big breakthrough because Mars transiting through the eighth house and especially enhanced by Uranus can be a big breakthrough in some psychological blockage that you have almost like explosion and you release it that has had more dark connotations for you connecting it to the star al gold the evil spirit al gold <laughs> you know the evil spirit that you cut it off that you break away from hopefully rather than it you know the monster taking you over there um it can be some important developments there 
And so, but you be careful, you know, around the middle of the month with power struggles with others and spending and the money as well. Um, but overall, it can also activate the conjunction of Uranus and Jupiter. That's abundance bringing for the next 14 years. It happened in April, towards the end of April. So Mars passing over there can be activating you into action connected to something eight house related, which is stock markets, insurances, inheritances, mutual resources, finances, occult knowledge, psychological breakthroughs, and so on. And activating you into that to take action into those themes and topics. And last but not least, towards the 20th, 21st, there is a full moon Libra in your fourth house, towards the end of your fourth house. Its full moon is about it will illumination, seeing the results of something, getting the results of it. And it might be connected with property, with real estate or family. The family can become more of a focus the last 10 days of the month for you Libras. Maybe something with real estate. If you've been looking for real estate, it can come to, you know, things start moving there. Or you, or it might be, there is a chance there because the full moon is with, Pluto, which is energy of power struggles or crisis, something connected with the family uh, that can be intense emotions or uh, activations of emotions with family, with parents, with, you know, extended family. Just be aware of those tendencies, especially around the 20th, 21st. Deep emotions, very powerful emotions can be stirred in you, but usually keep your head cool because your fourth house is ruled by Saturn, so there is usually naturally more in control of emotions, but still it's now that now can be this emotional activation. But again, as I said, for real estates and such kind of stuff, it can be positive activating influence. So you can also have some deep realizations about your family, deep release, because full moon is also about releasing. Uh, it, it's very manifesting influence, but it's also about releasing some attachment that are more toxic, that are connected to how you were raised as a child or to your behavior as a parent, some transformation in your parenting behavior, some intense transformation in your relationship with your mother, or even releasing attachments to ancestral or parental patterns of your early family, or making some change in your own family. So with this, we conclude the Libra reading. There, as I said, there's a lot of light, Sirius, Aldebaran, the two most powerful stars, positive ones, but I'll go as well. There is this internal battle with evil, <laughs> good and light, but the light is more powerful. So use it this month. Thank you.